That. Hello, 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 all. My name is Antoine Hunter, Purple Fire Crow. I'm really excited about today. Today, November 4th, 2021, here on Death Woke. A few episodes ago, we had a special guest. Well, before I start, uh, oh, let me slow myself down. I, I, I've been getting reoriented uh, last few weeks, uh, so I've been going so uh, so fast uh, pace. So you know, I'm kind of learning how to uh, slow down. You know, especially you know with with COVID, uh, you know, 2020. Uh, that taught us how to slow down. And now people are going back to doing things in, per in person, different states, different communities. Uh, and that things now, now, now are pacing up again. No, no. You know, what did we learn? We need to learn how to be patient. Slow down. Don't become like a microwave. If you're like a microwave, then you don't get your full nutrition. You don't get that full wisdom, recognition, connection. You know, microwaving is just covering the surface. It's a warm up. But the core, that core of that food, no, it's missing. You know, soul food is that real food, real food for the people. So let me go ahead and introduce my cool interpreters. Let's go see. Let's see what let's, let's see their names. Please meet interpreter Jay. And meet interpreter Mateo Luis. I want to say thank you so much for coming this evening, for providing your services. Appreciate you. Great. Now, our special guest, Armani. Lawrence. Now, Amani was on a earlier uh, episode, and we were talking about deaf, trans, uh, BIPOC, uh, trans community. What was going on in the community? Uh, we we're talking about uh, their life and what was going on in their life, you know, their journey, and that's what deaf woke is about: discovering unveiling that journey, recognizing the identities. No, it's that push and pull. We had a great show. Uh, unfortunately, though, we had some tech issues and, and glitches. And so I wasn't satisfied. So Armani and I discussed and we we're like, hey, you know, let's, let's run that show again. So please welcome. My friend, Armani. Hi there. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, very excited and have been looking forward to the opportunity. It's great. You know, last time, you know, we were talking about your transition, uh, trans community, your life. You know, that beginning unveiling of yourself. You know, how's it been since our last episode till now? What's been going on? You know, at that time uh, with the original, the first show, 
you know, I had just recovered and was in the process of still really early on recovering from the top surgery. Now uh, I'm post-op. Uh, now we've been six months post-op. No, almost seven months. And I feel, you know, great. My uh, my range of motion is is back. You know, before I, I signed very small, <laughs> yeah. small yeah. face. Yep, yep, I remember. Like little T-Rex arms, you know, my signing was like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, you were kind of restricted. And now you're free. Yes, yes. You ready to do some backflips now? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> that might be too much to go back. I, I, I may not land. I may end up on my, on my side. So, no. <laughs> You're right, though. You got to take care of yourself, especially after the surgery. You know, you can't get out there too quick. Did, you know, did you get the opportunity to sleep in more? Uh, you know, did you, were you able to exercise? You know, at that time, initially, uh, I got approval to do to do go to do some exercises, start working out. I got that approval and that permission. But I noticed that in my chest area, it would hurt while I was trying to bench press or work out. So it, it took little by little. It was step by step. You know, I, I was trying to do hit. Are you familiar with the hit process? The high intensity. What was it high? Yeah, intensity high intensity. Interval oh. training. So you train for 20 minutes, you go real quick, and then you rest for 30 minutes, 30 seconds. And then you do one minute, and then you do two minutes and rest. And so you'll do one minute of high intensity, you'll do 30 seconds rest, one minute high intensity, 30 seconds rest. And that's for 20 minutes. And <laughs> I, I felt out of shape, <laughs> but it's taking time. It's taking time to get there. But now you're good to go, huh? Well, you know, not quite really. I mean, I love food. I, I acknowledge I love food. I love to eat. I got a sweet tooth. Um, <laughs> you know, some people are afraid, you know, after surgery, you know, they don't feel like they're going back, the, the, the capability of doing things that they love, you know, going back to doing the things that you love doing. But you're, you're back to doing, right? You're back to doing the things you love right. doing. You just had to slow down. Right. You know, you had to pace yourself. Yeah. Because at that time, you know, at, at that time of the surgery, your body's not responding the way that it typically would, uh, saying no and kind of limiting itself and, and just kind of warming up and moving with that. You know, I did some yoga and found, wow, it, that was, that even took time. You know, I would still feel sore and take, you know, steps back. It helped to meditate, you know, with life, with everything that's going on with COVID. You know, it was very nice to take the time to meditate and the yoga helped a lot. Yeah. You know, speaking about meditation, you know, self-realization. You know, it's really where you put your energy, you put your energy within yourself, you know, recognizing yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I need to learn how to do that. Ooh, that ain't easy, yeah? No, it's not. No, you're right. You know, sometimes when you're meditating, you, you find your mind is starting to wander and, and, and you're trying to follow your thoughts. And it's, and it's like, no, just, just stay in this moment, stay in this moment, assess it. Where are we investing this energy? How, you know, for example, like with COVID, you know, you're feeling anxious, you're feeling irritable. You're, you know, I know for me, I do have uh, challenges and problems with anxiety at times. And so taking that time to pause and assess it, and kind of see life, how you can change your life. You know, what, what COVID, what areas COVID impacted in your life, you know? You know, you know, we were talking about kind of, you know, getting physical, being physical. And now, you know, now we're transitioning to talking about spirit and, and meditation. Uh, yeah, you got it. I can feel your high spirit right now. Uh, you know, we had mentioned, you know, we had talked about that surgery, that transition, you know, preparing for it, that the anxiety, you know, you know, I, I, you know, getting comfortable with that identity. You know, that process. Now, so, now you'd mentioned a meditation. Uh, does that apply? 
does that apply to, you know, really immersing into your identity is using that kind of a catalyst of meditation? Yeah. As I dropped in and kind of really steeped into my identity, there've been some very difficult parts in the, do, uh, in the journey. There are, not only do I identify as trans, but I also identify as non-binary. And it, it, it's like, I'm not sure if I'm gay. I'm not sure if I'm bi, my orientation, my who I'm attracted to. Those things have also had to come out and be uh, assessed as I have delved in to my identity in that journey. When I approach people, when I interact with people, when I say I'm trans or I'm non-binary, they say, well, which is it? Is it she? Is it her? And I say, no, it's they, it's them. And so there's... I have a hard time with asking people to say they and them, not she or her, correcting them with my pronouns. So it's tough, you know, having to over and over repeat myself. And that has to, I have to look at myself to make sure how I look, how I present myself, how I approach someone when I'm correcting them, you know, what best suits me, what, what serves me, what matches me, what doesn't match me anymore. You know, you, you, you're you feeling more confident today, you know, being who you are, you know, asking, you know, kind of nudging, you know, but now you're kind of, you're being more, you know, s s uh, direct. You know, how do you get people to respect your pronouns? Is it by, you know, email? Do you wait until later? Or, you know, or are you right in the moment? You know, when I, when I introduce myself to people, the first thing I do is I say my name and I say that my pronouns are they, them. And I emphasize it from the beginning. Please don't call me she, because I may look a little different, uh, a little bit more like a non-binary presentation. So people are always kind of assessing they're not sure one way or another. For example, today I had a job interview and I said my pronouns, <clears throat> excuse me, are they and them? They're okay, great. My daughter's the same. And I thought, oh, I, it made me feel, you know, inside I just felt so good. I felt seen, I felt recognized and it made me happy. You know, I made my day. Let's go back in time. You know, did you feel, you know, back back in the day that people were open to trans and non-binary, you know, be, being that, you know, did you feel the deaf community w was open or did you feel like they're, you know, you were just open minded? Mm. Mm. Yeah, yes. I, I think people are starting to be open more and more, but some will, you know, some will, some people will just not recognize or acknowledge it. Some people will say, well, what's that? And, you know, I'll explain and I'll educate a little bit. And, you know, it's important for you to educate yourself when it comes to queer identities non-binary and trans identities. So I do spend time educating because I get misgendered a lot. I do. Yeah. Okay. Misgendered. You know, my, my boss, my very first job, you know, my boss said she, her, because my boss had already known me previously from another job and in another part of my journey. So I have emailed, I have texted, um, that's an ongoing conversation. I'm still struggling and going through that right now. That's great. You know, you recognize the space you're in. You know, you're willing uh, to take that energy to protect yourself, to be vulnerable. And like you said, you know, meditation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, where, are you, where am I investing my energy? Mm-hmm. You know, who are, who's willing to listen? Not not with their eyes or their ears, but with their soul, right? I like that. I like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You 
you know, one journey compared to another journey. I want to say old journey, you know, but during your journey. And, you know, you, know, you mentioned, you know, about top surgery. Do all people need to do uh, proceed with uh, top surgery? No, exactly. That's correct. It's how you identify with your body in the trans experience. You know, you are always trans enough as soon as you say you are. No, I like you. I like what you said. You know, you're trans enough. <laughs> yeah. You're black enough, you know? Mm hmm. You're she enough. You're him enough. You're they, them enough. You're already enough. Your identity is simply enough. We're human, right? Right, right. I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. And I really appreciate that. You know, you're, you're so courageous. You are a shining, shining light. You know, being courageous is learning how to, you know, share that information. You know, for you, you decided that you wanted top surgery. Yes. But that ain't free. Mm -mm. It's not free. I think we, the uh, our last uh, episode, we, were, we talked about you, know, you were fundraising. Uh, we talked about the insurance aspect of it. That's the sign, right? Top surgery? It's typically oh, okay. with the chest, or you can do top surgery. Either's fine. I want to make sure. You know, I, I don't know if the what you know political correct sign language. So thank you for educating me. Sure. Uh, but right, it's not free. No, it's not free. You know, you had to fundraise and reach out to the community. First of all. You know, that was amazing that you were able to find confidence and trust in your community to reach out to them and, and ask for support. Mm -hmm. You know, how did you come to that point to, you know, get courageous to ask people? Did, were you just, is it something that you just elected to do? Was it just innate? You know, I had the help of the community with uh, my friend, Melissa. They posted and shared about the fundraiser and people just sent money, you know, and we, we spread the word. We did flyers and people just were very generous. I was quite overwhelmed with the community and with people's support. It was, I was overwhelmed with the love. I was overwhelmed with all of that. I never had received that kind of love and community support before, you know, growing up, I didn't get support of, you know, who I could be and who I am, but to have people support me and accept me and, and love me who I am, not even know me, but, but support me. I was extremely overwhelmed, extremely touched. It's something I'll never forget. You know, we, uh, you know, going back in time or, you know, regarding being younger and not getting that support, but now finding that support and that love, um, are, are, have, have you reached your goal for fundraising? I did. I, I met the goal. I met the goal. Everything, yes. everything is paid off. You know, what would you like to say to the people who supported you, who, you know, who poured in those, uh, those donations? You know, you know, I have no words to express and show everything, uh, in terms of how I appreciate it. Uh, I'm trying to show how I appreciate it. I was just so overwhelmed. Um, to me, you know, that goes beyond words, language. You know, I, I mean, how do you describe that feeling? You know, to, to, to have the top surgery, to be one's authentic self, to live in your own truth. I mean, yeah. Mm. Mm. You're going to make me cry. You're going to mess up my makeup. <laughs> <sighs> 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 I 
you know, just to see you smile, your presentation, that you're enough for the community. And being happy is what's critical. Seeing you happy mm. is a salient feature of life. You know, not mm. having that support, you know, where is it? You know, getting that support. <sighs> You know, where are the other uh, humans that can, that you know, can find that support? You know, who is out there that you know struggling? You know, with their deaf, trans identity, non-binary. You know that culture. You know where where can they get more information, more support, more resources? Well, you know, uh, the Deaf Queer Resource Center. Uh, that's who actually guided me and kind of facilitated some of my journey. I've been following their Instagram, uh, Deaf Queer Resource Center, and, and their various uh, postings and information. A friend of mine had actually showed me and kind of connected me with them. And uh, they actually helped support my journey in terms of different tidbits and so forth. And if not for them, where would I be? You know, where where would I have been able to plug into a community and and feel inspired and educated just for my own personal journey. Um, so absolutely them. You know, has your journey just been stable or has it been like a roller coaster, huh? It has been a roller coaster, ups and downs, a lot of, uh, a lot of thinking, a lot of meeting people, uh, feeling similar connection where, who are journeying and, and going through what you're going through. Uh, you know, and going through some of my own depression, uh, the struggle of the identity and going back and forth and the things that come with it, you know, but I wouldn't change anything about it at all. I like that. Uh, you know, it, the journey came, but I wouldn't change it. I like that. You know, I mean, you'd mentioned uh, meditation, but what are some other activities? Do you kind of surround yourself by positive people? Yeah, I, I spend time with like-minded people. You know, people who have similar identities as myself. It doesn't have to necessarily be the exact same thing, but people who are going through similar journeys, uh, more or less uh, similar in, in their way. Uh like how they approach themselves. I love being around that. And like you said, you know, so, and, and a lot of them are positive people, but it's that similar thinking, that similar uh, framework. You know, I believe, I believe that if you're not around people who think like you, you end up feeling different. You know, for example, my best friend couldn't understand uh, my journey. And we were parallel and we were working in the same restaurant and we would go from restaurant to restaurant together. And I started to change. I transitioned and found myself having a very hard time. And we were very close. Uh, and then I felt different and they were going through their own journey. And I found my journey going opposite of theirs or away from theirs. And right. And, and you just kind yeah. of drift away. Right. And, you know, and, and trying to find a way to, to meet again and understand each other again and, and understand where each one of us is, is coming from. You know what I mean? Yeah, that happens. You know, two people can be best friends on the same journey and then depart. But then that journey disembarks from one another and you, you don't know how to feel. And, you know, you're like, forget them. But then that one day that that path reconnects. And, you know, we mature. Maybe we learn how to help somebody else understand. You know, sometimes some people won't get it. Some people will get it. Some people refuse mm -hmm. to get it. Mm -hmm. The point is as long as you get it yeah you know that's you know people become woke you yeah. know yeah that's why i love this show deaf woke mm -hmm. it's about waking people up to who we are
Now, have have you, uh, you know, is it important to you that you kind of get with your best friend again? Yeah, I mean, they mean so much to me. You know, they, the, their impact, you know, they taught me how to be a cook. They taught me about my work ethic, right? Is that the sign? Is yeah. It, yep, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and they told me that I'm a person. And that really changed and affected and influenced my life. And so, you know, coming back together and finally meeting again and her, you know, trying to learn about trans and and uh, where I've come from and, and my part in all of that. And so, and my perspective and seeing each other in a different light and still supporting each other and still loving each other through it and getting back on track together again. You know, learning about your real identity, life's changing, but love doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Love does not change. And I, I, I want people to understand that. Mm -hmm. Love does not change. If you loved me then, you'll love me now. Because I am who I am. Mm -hmm. So please love who I am. Yeah? Right. Did you always love yourself? Was that, did you, from the very beginning, did you love who you were? Love myself in my journey? Well, yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I do have problems in loving myself. I have problems loving my trans body. But as I move through the journey, I find I have more acceptance for myself. The more I live in my truth, you know, the more I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm here, I'm there and I'm, I'm journeying on this path and, and just accepting that, you know, I do, but I do, I completely love myself now, even though I struggle with different things, I still, I still love myself. Yes. What would you tell other people? Who's potentially maybe you know, thinking about top surgery? You know, if this is, make sure it's for you. Because once you make this decision and you move with it, go ahead. Absolutely. If you're still hesitant, ask others, ask someone who's had the experience, that journey of the top surgery, ask them the questions. How did this feel? What came up for you? What was the process? And if you're still not sure that you want it and you want, you're not sure that you want to go through the surgery, you're still trans. You can use tape, you can use binders. It's fine. There's not pressure. Don't pressure yourself. Do your research. Do, look for the information online and, and see from there. I agree 100%. That's very powerful what you said. Don't feel pressured. You know, do your research, study. And don't pay attention to the noise. Just pay attention to the, the people who are willing to support your decision. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the appropriate ways that someone can support someone who might be, you know, going through or thinking about top surgery? You know, part of it is is support is hearing them out, um, finding and sharing resources and, and giving it to them. Um, you know, if they're feeling hesitant, if they're feeling anxious, go with them to doctor's appointments. Drive them. If they have anxiety, walk them through it. I know for me, when I went to the doctor, when I would go to doctor's appointments, I would feel anxious because I didn't have somebody. And then I had a friend drive me and I'm, I'm so grateful. Uh, they came mm. with me to my appointments. Be that, that way I didn't feel alone because I'm so used to even growing up to just always being alone. And this time I felt so supported. You know, it's helpful to have someone go with you. To, to hear what's being said so that you don't have to be alone. Yes. I feel that. 
sometimes we just need somebody to be there at the doctor's appointment, somebody we can trust with the information, you know, somebody you can share your personal life with, your personal experience. I mean, simply is driving you to, driving you there. I mean, some people are like, ah, you're fine. You could do it yourself. It doesn't matter how strong you we may look like. There are different ways in which we can be supported. Asking for help does not mean that you're weak. I agree. It does not mean that you're weak. The love's there. People want to support you. People want to love you. And for me, yeah, I'm sorry. I just saw the comment. I got distracted there. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> but that's how I was able to find the true meaning of friendship and relationships, mm. Mm. you know, and growth growing from there. Right on. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Come on. Tell me more. Tell me more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. You said that it, you know the true meaning of friendship. When you said that phrase, oh, oof, the true meaning of friendship. It's powerful. You know, some people you may think you're your friends. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was more, uh, there's more trust, um, more more value, more cherish, uh, cherished moments. Seeing that person thriving, right? And I love that. You know, when I went through that journey, those people who have watched you walk through that journey, like, I mean, how do you say it? How How can I say I mean, how do you describe it? It's so difficult when someone has seen you through that part of the journey and then you have the opportunity to watch their part of the journey. It's different. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling, really. It's amazing. You, you know, when you look at my journey, I see you on your journey. I see you growing. You're seeing me grow. We're growing together. That's incredible. You know, some people are kind of uh, superficial with your support. Uh, you know, I, I have to support myself, too. Yes. Yes. And it's the opportunity of supporting one another. You know, self-love. You know, when I look at myself, sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm not cute. and My hair is all messed up. <laughs> Hair is out of place. But I have to say, wait a minute, hold on. I'm not ugly. I'm beautiful. Do you do that? Or do you do something completely different? You know, um, yeah, can you can you repeat that question again for me, please? Yeah, so for myself. You know, sometimes I wake up, I look at myself in the mirror, and I feel unattractive. But I have to tell myself, I am beautiful. And I may have to do it three times. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. What do you do, you know, for self-love? Yeah. You know, I do look in the mirror, and I do tell – I write it on the mirror – I actually write it on the what? mirror. It says, you are blessed. Yes. On the mirror. And then uh, you are beautiful. You know, it's on my mirror in the bathroom. And I write that out. And it's in my room. I write it out in my room. You got this. You are the reason why you are alive today. You know, I have those phrases, those mantras. And, and it helps me keep moving. Because sometimes, you know, for someone who struggles with depression, you need that. You need those words of affirmation. 
You need that. You need that for yourself. You know, if, if you can't do it for yourself, how is someone else going to do it for you? Yes. You know, because someone else can support it, but you got to do it for yourself first and then they'll, ma they'll support it. Thank you. You know, I, I too struggled with depression. You know, I have different challenges today. But depression can lead to, you know, self-harming. Luckily, I have a dance that saved my life. There it is. You know, when, when you're struggling and life is a struggle, you know, that can lead to some people hurting themselves. Yeah? Yes. Yes. So those who are watching the show, there are a high percentage of people. When people are, uh, high percentage of people who do not accept their, their selves, their identities, they mm -hmm. harm themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, when we don't accept who they are, we are adding to that harm. We are adding, potentially leading them to harm themselves. You know, when we think, oh, that person will just be fine. Mm. Every lion needs their community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The king, the lion king needs their community. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said. Yes, beautifully said. You know, I don't want to take too much of your time, but you are a powerful human. I want to give the audience time to ask some questions. We okay with that? Yes, I'm ready. Now, audience, people. So go ahead and type your questions in the chat box. This is your time to talk with Ar Armani. You know, we shared our truth. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, uh, either uh, either uh, platform, go ahead and uh, use the chat box, comment box. I got a message uh, and somebody wants to know, how did you ultimately make that decision to move forward with top surgery? You know, ultimately um, it was because I really struggled with my body, especially that part of my body. And so I started to do research. I looked things up. I spoke with <clears throat> people who had experienced top surgery themselves and they really educated and shared uh, shared things and, and resources and told me to look certain things up. And the more I, I read about it, the more I realized I, I wanted to go ahead and do it. It took me a year. It took me a year to go through it all the way from beginning to end, but it's the, one of the best decisions I've ever made. So question is, is what resources are there to support the deaf trans community? Deaf queer, deaf trans community. Well, like I had mentioned earlier, the Deaf Queer Resource Center, uh, Real Trans Talk is also there. For And that's not specifically just for the deaf community. It's in general for uh, deaf and hearing uh, trans and non-binary folks. Uh, so Real Trans Talk, but they have really been supportive in the deaf community. So be sure, you know, to check out uh, what Armani said, uh, Deaf Queer Resource Center. Uh, you can follow them and learn more about it. I'm on Facebook, IG, or Twitter, at Deaf Queer. They have so much information. They have tra uh, tr 
transcriptions uh, that supports the deaf blind community. So go there. Go, 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 go. Don't leave yourself out of the support loop. Right there. Yes, that's it. I think the question is, is where is the place beautiful? Well, it's inside yourself. That's where the place is beautiful. I agree. I agree. You know, like like Armani mentioned, uh, looking in the mirror, having those affirmations, uh, meditation. And, di and digging into me. Well, how do you protect the beauty inside? And what does that mean, beauty or beautiful? No, I think beauty and beautiful is that you are living your authentic self inside. You know, you are yourself, no matter what anyone tells you, whether they say you are, whether they say you're not, you are beautiful. Question is, is I've heard that insurance sometimes doesn't support top surgery. Is that true? Yes, that is true. What? That's why you have to make sure your insurance will cover it. Um, the top surgery, you have to find certain doctors. You have to navigate which insurance accepts what. I had to go through all of those steps. Mm -hmm, that's right. What? No, people don't realize. It's not just simply a surgery. You have, it's healthcare, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not me, right? It's, it's not, it's what I need. And like you said, it, you're making the best decision for your life. So I have a, a, a question that, that, that relates. You know, what's your path for the future? You're going to be educating people, uh, advocating for people. You know, I know you had experienced that you hadn't had that education or that support before, but but now you've kind of retrieved that information. So what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, yes, advocating for people, teaching people, educating people, because some people just don't have any idea. Some people are, you know, maybe trans. They don't know. You know, they're just going through life and, and, and not sure about their identity. Uh, you know, I'm here for them because I, I went through my journey. You know, and I'm, I'm what they call a late bloomer, right? I was late to the game. I, I found out that I was trans translator in life. Someone said, you know, are you trans? And I said, no, 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 no. And, and then it took me until, you know, here I am in my 30s and here I am in that process. But, you know, it's never too late to start this journey as a trans person. It's not. That brings me to my next question. Are you proud of the word uh, trans or do you not prefer that word trans, transgender? You know, some people, you know, are, you know, it's kind of mixed. Do all people use the word trans or transgender? You know, I haven't met someone who wasn't proud of their identity as a trans person. I mean, I am proud of being trans. Um, I haven't met someone yet. Um, because a lot of the people that I do meet are very proud and very out and very, you know, loud about it, very enthusiastic about their truth and living in their truth. Right. You know, but if you ask me again later, I would tell you, I'm maybe, maybe. I'm yes. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Ooh. You know, I think uh, continuing to live my truth and trying to, I am looking at changing my career and, and I, I want to start working in uh, and focusing on holistic medicine. Uh, oh, why holistic medicine? Because I, you know, I feel like I've gone through a lot of trauma. And I've gone through a lot of healing of that trauma. And I want to help others find uh, and work through their trauma and, and heal. It's important. 
Both are important. You have to work through the trauma. You have to to work through it and, and, and strive to heal, you know, and as I've been currently, you know, working through my trauma and healing, that's, that's so important. That's number one in life. You know, ha having that deaf experience, uh, do you feel like you get that attention that you're, that, that you're looking for? Or do they dismiss you? I, I feel like it's very ignored. We need deaf folks in holistic health. There are a lot of hearing healers, but where are the deaf voices? Where's the deaf representation? You know, those are things that I've been thinking about. Is that? Yes, I agree. I think you're a perfect role model for the people. If you haven't gone, if you haven't gone through what you've gone through, it's hard to connect with people, you know. You know, and you know, like us, uh, the BIPOC folk, like us. You know, is it easy to find uh, BIPOC holistic individuals, uh, or are they sporadic? You know, it, it's more like sporadic. It's more like sporadic. It's very few and far between. I think we need more BIPOC healers. And we do. We need more. And, uh, yeah. Question is, yes, holistic medicine. When you say medicine, you mean natural remedies? Like, what, do you mind, what is holistic medicine? What is that? Yeah, like natural medicine, natural modalities. So you're looking at massage, you're looking at chiropractic services, um, just healing work. There's Reiki, there's so many different modalities. For me, it's more more feeling like wanting to get more into massage. Do you mean things like holistic medicine in, in reference to uh, healing and uh, living your truth you know not living a static life but helping that medicine kind of recover you know like the interpreters you know you get you get those strains in the in the top shoulders and you're like ah oh, i got I need, I need i got i need some medicine you know <laughs> exactly yeah you know and then looking at like how to pair up the cbd with that you know i don't things that don't have thc in them but you know, looking at uh, like teas, there are different herbs that one can take in and incorporate things that you can use to relax. You know, I, uh, I would, I want the herbs. I want to study herbs that relate to massage. So not just doing massage itself, but also how you incorporate other modalities and herbs. I like that. They just think that it's just massage only. No, there's other correlations to massage and modalities. You know, like, you know, what's your favorite tea? Oh, right now, uh, my favorite tea is lavender. It really helps me be, be calm. Um, I love lavender um, because I'm actually allergic to the smell of lavender, but I can ingest it and it does keep me calm and and mellow and, and it allows me, I've, I've really gotten into a lot of teas. I mean, I'm not well versed in teas yet, but, you know, I want to... Uh, I want to be able to know like the different types of teas you would use to match a person's mind needs. So the question is uh, CBD. Do you mind elaborating on that? Uh, yeah. CBD to use uh, you. A lot of people use it to relax. It's not intended for. Um, what is CBD? CBD? I have, I'm, I'm, I have lost. Uh, my mind's gone blank here. With CBD, people use it to, sorry, my dog just barked. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Uh, with CBD, it helps to relax the body and it's, it's a medicine. You, it's a medicine. You can smoke it. It's a drug. Yeah. Sorry. I'm at a loss. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's okay. Yeah. Like you said, CBD helps relax kind of release, kind of reduces anxiety, uh, alleviates depression, uh, trauma. So CBD is cannabis, cannabinoid. Thank you. Yes. 
the the c the cbd full word i mean it, it it's a heavy word you know i gotta research it myself i, I don't want to m- mistake you know i don't know at all thank you no i appreciate that my mind literally went blank thank you <laughs> so there's several different names for cbd there's can uh cannabis but Listen, we're not doctors, um, so please, you know, speak to your provider, uh, uh, you know, to assess your needs. <laughs> right. <laughs> CBD stands for cannabis oil. Correction from the interpreter. Uh, this is uh, a quite. It says a little support, natural herbs, teas, massages are nice. That's sweet. Oh, yep, cannabis oil. Question is, how do you feel when you when you see a black mother drag her black son, who's a child, out of a presence of a Disney princess? Is that toxic or protective for a black mom to do that to her son? Do you know what do you know what uh, this question is in reference to? Is this a, a present presence? Oh, the presence. Princess. Oh, okay. Out of the princess, uh, out of the presence of a Disney princess. Oh, when the like the son is kind of coaxing up to a, the Disney princess, but a, uh, the mother pulled the son away. You know, I oh, that hurt my heart. I think that's toxic. Because this son, this black son, wants to be involved. Let him. I don't I don't view it as protective, but I know that some parents have different opinions and some have different ways that they parent their child or their kids. But I think that that example is extremely toxic. Be who you are, no matter who you want to be and whatever you want to participate in. This is your identity. It it doesn't matter you know, your gender, your presentation. Be involved and engage in your passion. Yes. I'm going to clarify for the audience. So what happened was, is that a black mother brought brought her black son to Disney World, Disneyland, and her son saw uh, a Disney princess dress and was like, I wanted to be a princess too. And and the mother dragged the son away, but you know we gotta love, we gotta we gotta allow people to love themselves. It's you know it's so it's you know I think there was just miseducation. We gotta educate ourselves. That's our child. You know what are they doing? Why are they doing that? Love them, right? Audience, we're running out of time. (laughs) <laughs> Armani is busy, people. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I you know I just wanted to focus on talking to my friend Armani. Therefore, we had to suspend the game. You know, I think this the conversation was important. But it'll be back. And we, you know, we'll have Armani back and we'll play the game with Armani. So again, uh, check out Deaf Queer Resources. Uh, Deaf Queer Resource Center is not the only uh, uh, resource. Now you can find them at, at Deaf Queer. Uh, you can reach out to Armani. Where? Well, on our social media. At Armani smiles on Instagram. 
Armani's Insta, uh, Instagram is at A R M A N I S M I L E S. That's right. That's right. Armani is here to support all of you out there. Armani. You have any last words that you would like to tell? Keep living your truth. You know, no one can take that from you. Mm. You know, mm. that's what's beautiful. That's beautiful. Armani, thank you so much for coming today. You're my first returning guest <laughs> you know for me i feel blessed to be in this space and to be part of your journey you know just to be cool and just be there with you so thank you for coming educating us And we always have to continue the conversation. It seems people are still learning more, right? I know you just mentioned, like you were talking about what your experience today at your job interview, you know? Uh, and yeah, and they accepted you. Uh, that, that person had a similar experience where their child uses the same pronouns. So thank you so much for educating us. You inspired us. You educated the community and everyone out there. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for allowing me in your space. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for asking me to come back. And I was so happy to be back. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I'm still not satisfied. I want some more. I want some more. Yes. But thank you. All right. How do y'all feel? Y'all feel that? Did you feel Armani's warmth? Her spirit? Did you, get, did you feel that? So now my final thought. You know, before the show started this evening, I'm not feeling good. And I woke up, figuring out what I was going to do. I was feeling weak. I didn't know what I was going to do, but, you know, I felt I needed to be here. I needed people to hear from Armani, to feel her wealth, her warmth. To see her, her bravery. To see, hopefully, that her story can resonate with you. Correction, interpreters are there. Just like Armani supporting their identity. You know, if you can support them, in turn, you support yourself. And that's love. And when Armani got that, that, that love and that support from the community, and that's tr living your truth and having someone respond to that truth with love, that's friendship. Whew. It's not enough to just listen. Not with our eyes, but with our soul. You know, follow Armani's social media. I want you all to feel supported. Armani has an amazing spirit. I'm human, I make mistakes, and I try to fix those mistakes. 
And so I don't run from mistakes. I, and I learn how to try to support. We got to be open-minded. We can all learn from each other because we are human. I hope you all feel inspired today. I know I do. So you see, you see that hashtag deaf woke? Well, right here, you can follow Armani at uh, her, at their social media, at Armani Smiles. Uh, here's this Deaf Queer Resource Center, at Deaf Queer. I feel incredibly inspired. I mean, I, I, you know, I got, I got, I got to stop. I can go all day, all night, but we ain't got time for that. So, peace, love. I'm out. Where's my banner at? Hi. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Death.